Friday, the last day of the month, June 30th, market analysis, Stan Ehrlich. Happy 4th of July coming up. We have some early closings on Monday. You need to be aware of that. We have a significant development this morning with stock market indexes. Very significant. I was wrong about the amount of decline that the spider and the other indexes was going to have. And starting out with the S&P, I expected, and it's not out of the question still so far, I'll tell you why, wrong about the amount of decline, and it stopped four days ago at the beginning of support. And I mentioned that, but I didn't think it was gonna do more than one or two days worth the bounce, which it did and then start to go back down. And yesterday it didn't. It almost closed. And here's some of the important part that I got to convey to you. It didn't close a very small gap that was on the way down from June 16, June 7, June 20 over a weekend. So that gap still exists. We jumped, gapped above that previous space on the daily data chart, the gap, this morning. We fiddled around and tried to come down some, and you can see that on the one minute chart right here. And it opened and then it rallied to a high, fiddled around, got down a little bit, couldn't make a new low, couldn't make any gap closure of the gap this morning on the way up, any closure of that at all. And then it's made new highs again. Now here comes the new high part. That's very important. Going back to the S&P daily data chart. We are at, for all practical purposes, the previous highest high, which was a top for about a week or so. I caught it. I told you about it. I expected the dip to happen, but I expected, and they're still not out of the question, to get down to 423. It only got down to 31. So from a high of 43, I uh, got halfway, a little bit more, a little bit lower than halfway down. Not good enough, but I got my excuses. A uh, major support area turned it around and brought it back up. Here's the thing. You gapped up this morning right across a previous gap from a couple of weeks earlier. I, in 52 years, cannot remember uh, a market that has what would normally be called a pseudo island bottom because island bottoms gap down on one day. And then the next day, usually they're only one day in length, usually gap up again, leaving the one day isolated uh, with a gap going down and a gap going up. This is not the bottom of a break. And this is not one day. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight days are now separated by a gap going down and a gap going up this morning. I keep saying, and it's true, gaps are almost always closed. They're like a black hole in space. And so I'm going to have to put a marker. You'll see it Monday. Uh, and there is a market on Monday. It's just abbreviated. So there will be a Zoom meeting. If the market's open, I'm, I'll do a Zoom. Tuesday's 4th of July, so there's no Zoom, no market. And we start back up again on Wednesday. So this gap is very likely to be closed. What happens if we stop where we've stopped already this morning, just a little while ago, at these previous tops, which is the technical resistance level, previous tops? And remember, they are profound highs so far, going back quite a substantial amount of time, all the way back to... April 21 of 22, so well over a year, a year and three months or so. You'll have, if we stop and we don't make new highs, that's a very big if because we look like we're still getting strong. I mean, what the heck, big deal. So you're going sideways for 30 minutes. That does not make a major top, but it could. That's how they start. All we need to do is start going down 443.25 is the first spot to break below. And then again, other previous lows on the way down 
uh, will, especially my little alarm line this morning here at 441.80, if we break that today, may or even tomorrow, um, probably signal that we have had a high, past tense, about two points, three, two and a half points higher. Not We're not too far away from it. Okay, so gap to close on the way down, created this morning when we gapped up. Previous rally highs, resistance. We're not overbought almost to my stringent criteria, 75. But we are in the 73 area, which is damn close to my official overbought, which will turn the prices yellow, like it did two weeks ago when we got significantly farther than 75. So the, the stage is set for a dip as to whether it's going to do it or not. I don't know because I haven't got enough technical evidence to uh, come to a conclusion. There's a possibility it could just go screaming straight up, make new highs for a couple of more points. Remember, we're already five and a half points higher on the day, which is not a bad rally. Lately, that's pretty damn good. If you go back, you know, several months or more, then eh, five points is normal. And seven, eight, nine would be a big day. 10, 11, 12 would be a very big day. And we certainly have seen point change, net higher or lower, bigger than that. But they're very rare. So five lately is not bad. Maybe it's running out of steam. I just can't tell at the moment. It's too close to, too close to come to a conclusion. Most of what I said is going to apply to one degree or another to the DIA, which did make new highs, but is uh, choking a little bit at the moment, slipping back slightly. Now that really is very typical of a bull trend, a bull move, a rally. It really, like I said, needs to come down a significant amount more and start to break the lows made two, three, four hours ago, that kind of thing. In the case of the DIA, probably break a new low for the day. Uh, it has rallied substantially, but it's not quite at the highs of two weeks ago. So we're not in that quite the same situation. And the RSI is only almost 70, but not 73 like the spider. So it's not you know neutral or low. It's in the realm of being overbought, but not quite. There sure as heck is a gap from not only two weeks ago going down, but also today opening, gapping up above a resistance area. So will it close the gap of this morning? I think the answer is yes. I think it's going to make a form of a double top, but not as accurately as a spider might be able to. The cues are very similar on the daily data chart to the DIA. Resistance level has been reached almost, not quite. We did gap up uh, between yesterday's high and today's low, and even the high of a couple of days ago, somewhat. But two weeks ago, there was no gap. So this is the only one at the moment on the way up in the queues, which could do a little double top, sort of, and have a minor correction, sort of. And I'm still thinking we're not out of the woods yet. We might have a break down to 333 and a third, 333 and a third, to close the gap at the beginning of the month. That was May 24th, May 25th. So it was a couple of days before that. So I'm a, between a rock and a hard spot at the moment. I have to kind of wait to see if we start breaking down in the next, before the close. It is Friday. Again, I remind you, before a, almost a three-day weekend, not quite, not quite the same thing. Trading some on Monday. Um, nevertheless, sort of a three-day weekend. And why do I say that? Because the markets tend to do some strange things before three-day weekends like top out, like I'm alluding to at the moment, that really hasn't started very well. And we're right up against the damn highs on the spider. Five and a third higher right now on the spider at the moment. Let's look at futures. We got a new signal today in futures and some interesting developments. I always start out with, I think I'm going to be unfortunately going in a random pass and pa a pattern today. But I'll start out with the E-mini. <coughs> I forgot to set these up in a row, my ducks in a row. Um, E-mini, of course, is the S&P spider. Same thing, except it trades different trading hours. And that does change the signals and a little bit the, 
uh, patterns, <coughs> excuse me, that are created. So um, almost overbought 73.36. On the RSI, I like 75. Wells Wilder, who I learned RSI from back in the 1970s, 80s, uh, nice guy, moved to New Zealand. I think he's left us now. I think he's gone um, from what I've been told by other friends in the industry. So 73 and 0.4 at the high of the day, at the previous rally highs for the S&P Spider and the E-mini both pretty much, tells me prime territory for a possible turn down. You can't prove it by the way it's acting so far. Next chart is bonds broke a bull trend line yesterday that had been really great for a long time, but they never last forever. Well, rarely. But hey, what happened? We didn't break previous lows. We didn't break support. We came down close and it didn't get oversold, but we have a minor upside reversal, a lower, lower and a higher close probably at the moment. This could, because of the support level it's bouncing off of, turn it back up to the high of the trading range for the last month. That's important because I keep saying, if we start to punch out a 130 quote on the bonds, we'll be back into the range that we had for a couple of months, starting back uh, March 10th or so until uh, May 10th or so, two months. That is critically important because it contains the top of the market going back uh, to October of last year, even November. A variety of rally highs that were all in the same approximate price range. That has developed a significant resistance area. That's why I've got this red bar here. If we start plotting 135 or higher on the bond futures, we have a major long-term breakout. Bullish as heck for a long period, months and months, if not years. But that hasn't started yet. I need to get up there and do it. We'll see what happens. Today's support holding and a minor reversal could be the start of that next chart. Uh, it's heating oil. Normally I have 10 year notes and I'll get to them in a moment. Um, just a cotton pick in second here. 10 year notes should be right here. That's bonds, 10 year notes are right there. Okay, 10 year notes. Tested support, almost exactly, is a minor new low and is doing the same thing. Minor new low for three months and a slightly higher close could be doing the exact same thing that bonds are doing. So both are turning. I'm not convinced of that. I'm still neutral to long-term bullish. Short-term, mm, let's see this rally some more early next week. I'd love to see it close above 113.20. So once we see 113.22, 23, um, I'll feel a lot more comfortable to say that this was a test of the bull trend line, like very much like bonds, broke it a little bit and then popped back again, kind of like a ping pong ball being pushed underwater and let go. I use that phrase once in a while. The next chart is going back to bonds. Okay, heating oil. And I'm going to jump over to crude, which is usually my next one right here, crude. And I'm long-term bearish on the energies, as you know. In some cases, I'm waiting for a downside breakout. And that's the case here in the crude. The highs are lower and lower and lower and lower over time. Short periods, intermediate periods, and long-term periods. The lows are also basically lower. Not lately. We've got a support level that's holding. But the, it's continuing to basically pressure down closer to that support. And we're going to break, I think, below 64 and start plotting 63 and lower. That's the major long-term breakout period. And I would look for much lower levels. And I do expect that to happen. I think it might be next month. Next chart could be. Yeah, good. Heating oil. Same kind of commentary. It rallied up into resistance. The highs are continually lower over a period of time. We've gotten some great signals here right at the top of the rally. And that's why the ER red and green bars are there. They are buy and sell signals frequently to the exact day that markets have huge turning points. And that for this particular symbol, heating oil was on June 17th. 
the top of a really big move up and the beginning of a move down of major amount, almost at the top back on November 28th. Remember, I can have these green and red signals up to five days after oversold or overbought conditions. Those are the things that are very important to me. So if we get oversold, I look for reversals. That's price action reversal. And if we get overbought, I look for bearish price action reversal. Not complicated. It's can you follow the rules? No, people don't tend to do that. So that's why the strategy is 100% automated. It'll do it for you. You can watch it. You can overwrite it. You don't have to let it go. You can stop it, et cetera, et cetera, anytime you want. But it will do it for you if you can't pull the trigger. Okay. Maybe that wasn't a good analogy, but sorry. Next chart is natural gas. Bad sell signal a few days ago. Probably made nothing. Probably lost a little bit of money. A good sell signal before that, a good sell buy signal before that, they weren't super profitable, but hey, you got a good move in a week. Uh, now I'll look back a little further for you. A whopper, well, not a whopper, but a damn good bottom for two weeks. And I think I can show you, oh yeah, I love it. These are the ones you live for. These are the ones you dream about. That was the high of a head and shoulder top, the top day. We didn't get a sell signal on the first shoulder or the last one. We got a little buy signal before it rallied, but the pattern worked outstandingly. Unfortunately, no buy down there and so on, but the top of the market, the top day. If you're an investor, tell me you don't like that. We got a sell signal on the rally high here. That one didn't work. That one is great. Let me go to the next chart. Gold, silver, and platinum have been great for us for many months now. We got the low signal on all three of them. This was uh, November 28th for gold. A bad buy signal. Remember, our bad signals can and do make a little bit of money, and it doesn't look like it on the daily charts because we enter the trade on one-minute charts, move our trailing stop on one-minute charts Sometimes very, very quickly for most people, within hours, it is already protecting a profit. So you don't see that on the daily data charts. You only see the major signals for the big moves. And that's what I'm trying to show you. This system picks bottoms and tops to the exact day very often. My partner and I, Jim, have come to the conclusion just because there are many years of experience um, that the 25 to maybe 30% of the time, somewhere between 20 and 30, we get the top and bottom day within at least two or three weeks before and after the signal. Obviously, sometimes the signals are much, much more profound than just two or three weeks. I can tell you we've got a sell signal on the top of the Berkshire Hathaway stock, the most important uh, expensive stock in the world, I think around $450,000 a share. We have a sell signal on the top of the Dow Jones back in 207 before the subprime loan crash. And on and on and on I can go. We just got a few months ago the bottom of the euro dollar to the day. All right, enough of that. Next chart. Silver. We caught the bottom to the exact day. March 10th. We caught the top twice to the exact day. On a double top. That one and that one. And what I've come to call a complimentary new short sell signal a couple of days right away after the last one that worked good. Now, I'm not going to call it a complimentary. It failed, but this one worked outstandingly well. So complimentary. Down we go. Downside objective fulfilled. And guess what? At the bottom, we've got a bullish engulfing. Come on. Do better. So bottom here, March 10th. Some great signals. Actually, four and a half in a row. Five. I'll count that as a good signal. Next chart. Platinum. Got the bottom again back on February 27th. We have a, uh, a poor, very poor. There was a little bit of money to be made here for a day or two uh, on the one-minute charts. Uh, but it would take me hours to show you that, you know, the one minutes, and I don't have that time. 
great signal on top, great signal almost on the high, great signal on the high, a great signal almost on the high, and a great bottom almost on the low. That was the high, and that was the low. I'm waiting for a buy signal, which could happen today. If we rally enough, that would be above yesterday's high in order to get a green bullish engulfing that I would hope would be a whopper. But all I can say is oversold means you're going to rally. No outright bullish engulfing ER buy signal. But oversold means you're going to rally. And looks like we are going to start today. Lower low, currently higher on the day. That's the way it begins. And where is it going to go? Well, we're already at my first spot, so that doesn't count anymore. Um, probably a minimum of three, nine, four, 944. I don't know. May, maybe up to uh, 993. I don't have many clues here. Next chart. High-grade copper. Um, kind of neutral at the moment, but we're oversold, so I'm expecting a little bit of a rally. But this is really a kind of a lack of a long-term trend, unless you just say bearish. And I do have to agree. Look, gigantic double top, April of 22, ah, 21, sorry. And a bearish engulfing at the top for years before and since on March 7th of 22, we picked the high day in the copper market for a very long period of time. I would have liked to have picked the lowest low, but we didn't. We picked the second lowest low. We broke down, made new lows for many months. After testing support, it finally got crashed through. Big move down, oversold the whole way down, almost. Finally, you got a rally, and it didn't get anywhere, but maybe eventually back up to resistance. It stopped. This is a long-term bear market. I'm looking for a test of the lows of 3.5504, blah, 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 and probably lower than that. Uh, after this little rally is over, because remember, the last two days we've been oversold. Next chart. Something's going on with soybeans and bean oil and bean meal, but not corn and wheat. So it's not grains in general. It's specific to beans. Edamame's great. Um, this is a new high and a likely screamingly strong new high close for a long time. And it is challenging the highest high for a very long time. Could this develop into a really broad double top formation? Yes. We were recently overbought and had a two or three day, well, two day downside correction. Eh, just barely enough to get out of overbought territory. I would have expected more. I think I talked about coming down more yesterday. Now you have to stop right about here, maybe a tiny bit higher, right around those old highs that were way back on June of a year ago. In fact, it was almost exactly a year ago and create a whopping broad one-year double top. Are the odds in our favor that that is going to happen? I don't remember seeing very many double tops that was a year in duration that worked. So the answer is probably no. If there's a chance, though. So. I'm going to wait on any other commentary to see what happens next before I start opening my damn mouth. Next. Bean oil is similar to the respect that it's got a very strong rally today and that it's making new highs for a decent period of time. But the bean oil is nowhere near incredibly important price levels. And so it's got a lot of problems at higher levels as it chews its way up. If it continues to do so, I'm going to have to wait again in the beans, oil, and meal, probably also meal, for more commentary. So I don't like saying something I can't really back up uh, very well. So no comment. Now, we didn't get oversold on the dip. A little support level last during this month held and a pretty stout, decent rally, not as fantastic as bean oil and especially beans. So I'm gonna wait for next week to start making some hopefully insightful, good comments. 
nowhere near the same picture on corn. Look at this. Corn is tanked, not only just today, but you have to admit, in approximately a little over one week, it went from 605 to 505. Are you kidding me? It dropped a dollar. Well, that's not a dollar. Pardon me. It dropped a hundred dollars from 608 to 500 and let's say 802, 502, no big deal, in about six, seven, eight days, whatever it's been. Now it's challenging previous lows all of a sudden. Uh, and it's oversold now. So that's a combination that causes me to believe a bounce is about to start, which is exactly what I'm saying. How much of a bounce? 230, 550, look very plausible, and then back down. I don't like markets that break out of stuff to the upside or for that matter to the downside for only a short period of time. Usually it's only a day or maybe two. This one did last four days, five, and then come plunging back into the same range they were in. You could call that a false breakout or a washout. Usually there are a lot less time. Bottom line, short-term bounce. Next chart. Wheat. Here we go. Here's an exception to my rule, and I can give you why. Yes, we were overbought one, two, three, and four, and five days ago. So what counts is five days or less. So we've got the overbought condition within four days. That means you're supposed to have a downside correction. I'm positive that I mentioned that on June 26th. Next day, down hard. Good, I'm right. I like to be right sometimes. And the market goes down hard two days ago on Wednesday. It slows down yesterday, tomorrow, uh, yesterday. And today we end up with a bearish engulfing sell signal with the ER software. Now, we're going to be including, but it's not yet in the code here. Why would I go short when this is way far away from the turning point of the market, which I like to get very close to? <clears throat> Two greens right at the bottom. I don't like it. I hate it. I don't want to. This is he's, he's proven me right about overbought causing a downside correction. Much too much to go short way down here. So our new code, and it will be incorporated soon. So I won't see this red. We'll say this. What is the RSI today? Oh, my goodness gracious. It's down in the 30s. Way lower than I would like to be uh, looking for sell signals. In fact, it's almost down to the green line at 25 where I'm going to be looking for buy signals, period. So this seems to be stupid to be going short down here. I'm looking for buy signals coming up real soon if it gets oversold, which looks like it's quite possible. This signal just might work. I'm not saying that. I'm saying I don't like it being way down below the top like this. Next chart. Live cattle got the top of the market, got a complimentary sell signal, went down a little bit more, not very much. Now we're much higher than I thought the rally would lead to. Well, I know that we're out of our two short sales and they made some money. <coughs> and I can prove that with our ER1 and ER3 strategies that you are not being shown on the YouTube, which is free. Uh, those will be on my website, which is ersignals.com, which is not ready quite yet, probably in a month. And overbought. Will this lead to a double top? Yeah, maybe. Has it started? Yeah, I can't tell. It's way too soon. We have to start getting below today's low at least. And the downside breakout would be at 167, 168. So let's see what happens here. I don't like overbought. I think it's going to correct down. If it does that, it's going to start looking looking like a double top. And we'll see how that develops. Next chart. I don't want to be a buyer, that's for sure, at the moment. I would be a buyer later after a bullish breakout and then a retracement back to support. Because if we get a bullish breakout now in, again, live cattle, we'll just be more overbought and even more likely to have a correction. Again, hogs. 
We got the top so far. It's not been violated, but this rally is a little more than I expected. We got the high day, but it's not working very well. So I, you know, I'm not particularly happy with this. And or, let's see, the ER one probably lost a little money, and ER three might have made a little bit of money, calling it a wash trade. I don't know. I can't tell just looking at the daily charts. I have to look at the one minute and the way the code executed. A bottom for a week, got it. A bottom for about a week, got it. A day or two, got it. A great bottom, and ER3 kicked in very nicely. The day it got bought, it took off like a bat out of hell. You know that we do have two versions of ER1 and ER3. ER1 scalp version makes a day trade out of the entry, and ER1 overnight version sticks with the trade until we get stopped out. It stop moves slower. So ER3 got in at the green dots. ER1 gets in the same day. It's green or red doesn't miss, does not miss a green or red day entry. It is always, for better or worse, getting in when you ever see red or green. So we're short on the red day. We're long on these two green days from ER1 scalp. Maybe a lot profit, maybe loss. But ER1 overnight version may have stayed with the trade significantly longer. Next chart is OJ. Could be building a top, no comments. And don't go chasing this market. It's been overbought a day or two ago, not momentarily. Coco looks like it's about to have a significant correction, probably back to about 3,077 or so. One more, two more. Cotton, no downside breakout. Talked about this as it was happening real time. Bouncing today and yesterday, today in particular, and my comment yesterday was, could we get back up to the top of the trading range we've been having forever since last October? Yeah, why not? Not very far away. A mm, few days a week. We're between a rock and a hard spot. No bullish breakout, no bearish breakout. Next, sugar and less last trade uh, symbol. Got oversold. Got to its minimum downside objective. Almost super small miss. So it got, it got there for all practical purposes. And today, after being oversold, I told you, perfect opportunity for it to start to rally. Boom, the rally. How far? I mentioned before, 23.85 probably. And that's what I'll stick to. This is a triple to a double top, depending upon how you want to look at it. You could call that one high, for example, those two highs. And then just a week or so ago, another one. Or you could count all, you know, both of those in that one, a triple. Triples are really a little bit rarer, but we might be looking at it. One way or the other, it worked. Doesn't matter. Past tense, gone, and a bounce. So I am looking for a move down to 20.4 because there's no real reason other than the downside objective for the sugar to stop dropping. That's a decent top, a month and a half, two months. That's not a small period of time. Um, I am expecting to move down to 2040 or lower. And we're back to the S&P 500. You have a great weekend. See you on Monday. Hasta luego.